Welcome to Anchor Down from the Vanderbilt campus. Jimmy and Zach are back for the sixth edition of JT and Zeke. We're coming off a 17-13 win against MTSU. It was an away game, but the two of us have differing opinions on what happened Saturday, so we'll go into that later. Also, we have some cool stats to share with you guys, and sadly, we'll revisit the battle round. But at the end of listening to this podcast, make sure to subscribe. We have a lot coming to you soon. Friday, we have the basketball preview, and next Monday, we will be giving a preview for the South Carolina game. Yeah, it's an exciting time for me and Jimmy here as we get to start talking about basketball along with football. And I actually have a very positive outlook on the game, although it was sloppy. Very hard to watch for most of it. It was Mason's first road win here at Vanderbilt. And it was a game that we didn't play well in and we're still able to win. It shows that the team has heart, team has grit, and is actually able to be clutch in those moments down at the end with Webb's run, with McCrary's run. We were able to close out a game in the fourth quarter. Well, yeah, that was the first time we won in a close game, so that's a good indication. But my problem is the fact that we didn't play well, and you mentioned that. But there are two turnovers by McCreary, then another fumble that I guess we could say was almost unavoidable. The helmet hit the ball, and it was a fumble, whatever. But then the punts were bad. Maybe that was a result of the rain. There was a missed kick. There was a lot of things I didn't like to see. It was just a bad game to watch in general. It wasn't entertaining until the end of the game. I'm going to attribute that to it being an empty stadium. MTSU always gets on our fans about not filling our stadium. There was nobody there, and it was their homecoming game. And really poor weather, as Jimmy said. It's hard for the team to get up to play in that atmosphere after playing at Ole Miss the week prior. But that's not really, not really any excuse. College athlete, got to be hyped to play every game. I think a lot of it is mental, especially with McCrary. I think you got to get him in more positions to succeed. It seems that he likes going hurry up. He likes going shotgun. And we got to put him in more of those high percentage pass situations, and that'll make him be more efficient and cut down on his turnovers. That's definitely true. The the high tempo offense is just so much better for us. Webb had a huge run in the up tempo, and that was the one bright spot of the game, in my opinion. Webb ran for 155 yards. He averaged over six per carry. So he, he was a breakout player for the game. I liked to see that. But still, McCreary just wasn't too entertaining to watch until the very end. And we only had three points, three and a half quarters into the game. That's just embarrassing against MTSU. I think McCreary put a lot of the blame on himself for how the beginning of the game went in his press conference. He said he wasn't playing to his ability, which is true. But going back to the running game, the offensive line, which was kind of paced together, a couple of big guys out, really looked good. And it's the first time you can say all year that we actually ran the ball with any kind of effectiveness, really. And I think part of that is just sticking with it. Part of that is MTSU's defense isn't great. It's a team you would have liked us to see put up 35 against. Then everybody would be feeling super confident going mm-hmm. into South Carolina. But I still feel confident going into South Carolina. They're not a great team. I think our team will get up to play in that SEC atmosphere coming off the bye week, and it should be exciting. South Carolina is definitely the weak link in the SEC, and it's our best chance of winning an in-conference game, and I'm definitely optimistic about it too. Also, one more thing to note about the offense is that the O-line looked pretty good in the game, and in addition, we have a few cool stats about the offense this year. I know everyone has been a bit down about them, and reasonably so. We haven't been scoring much, but a couple of interesting stats are one, This offense this year is getting more yards per game than they ever did under the Franklin era. It's second highest ever in the program. Yeah, I mean, that's really cool. So that just shows us that we're moving the ball down the field, and it's just decisions when it matters that's affecting us. Two things, red zone efficiency, turnovers. That's what everybody would talk about looking at our program. Those two things that I think we could actually correct. And then looking at the defensive side of the ball, we have some more cool stats. Zach Cunningham, a beast, 15 tackles this week. That's crazy. Two two for loss. Yeah, two for loss also. And our team is third and third down defense in the conference. Yeah, and all of the offenses we face have been very good. Four of the five, the one being Austin P. that's not in the five, are top 30. And that's considering the fact that they've played against us and have only scored, like, usually around 15 points. Yeah, these are teams that are putting up crazy numbers in some of their other games. You look at MTSU, you look at Ole Miss. Those are teams that have put up 70, 70 twice this season. Yeah. Our defense is really shutting them down. Mason is a great defensive coordinator. One of the biggest concerns we have is do we keep playing to the level of our opponents? Because we can't really win every close game. No team can. I think part of that is, is Mason a motivator? Can he get the team up? Or is it just the players have some mental yeah it's it's all about the offense too that's the thing like the defense is motivated every game and that's what's so concerning 
the defense plays their heart out every single game. And then you have the offense that's just kind of like moping around the field. They don't start until there's six minutes left. They're playing slowly. I mean, it must be tough for the defense to get out on the field every drive when they know the offense isn't helping them out much. So that that's a, a concern for me. Hopefully that changes, but it, it's almost hard to see unless we make better decisions. Yeah, part of the concern is also the defense is giving the offense the ball for a lot of the game. That's the reason for some of the high yardage totals. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to see if the offense is going to have one of those games where they click, where they can march up and down the field, where it wouldn't matter if they had a great defense to win the game. And we're, we've yet to see that. Hopefully against yeah. South Carolina we can show that. Yeah, it'll be a fun game. I think it'll be a good chance chance for Mason to get his first SEC victory and it's an away one which would make it a special one in my opinion but uh, that's for that's not another two weeks I think right now sadly we are going to discuss last week's battle round I think and before we get into that we have a couple Tennessee stats that we'd that's like true to talk about. Yep. Tennessee's defense last in the SEC true and there are what five teams in the country that have been up by 13 points or more every single game one of those teams is Tennessee now the other four, all undefeated. Tennessee, a great two and three. Ooh, not very good for Butch over there. Hey, we have the same record as them right now. That could be a victory down the road. Also, since 2010, we have 31 wins. They only have 30. Another fun fact. Yep. So I guess now we'll get into the battle round. Jimmy might have wanted to cut this out this week as he looked over the last battle two Battle round, weeks. stupid. Yeah, I mean... Look at my record, picking games, 8-1. and one. Very solid, almost perfect. Jimmy, do you even want to say If yours? you want to bet on games, you should listen to my predictions. I, I, I went 0-5 last week. Just pick the opposite, and you'll be making bank. Coming in at a hot 2-7, and seven, looking to get back on track this week. We have two SEC games, two out-of-conference games we're pretty excited about. I think we're going to start out-of-conference this week. We have California, one of the best quarterbacks in the country in golf, going into mm-hmm. Utah. Play that team who's ranked number five in the AP poll. Some people don't think they should be that high. What do you think is going to happen there? I'm going to take Utah on this one. Utah's home. Cal's a bit overrated. They have a great quarterback, but the rest of their team is kind of lacking. I'm taking Utah. I'm actually going to go with the upset here. I'm going to take Cal on the road. I think a quarterback is the most important piece of the team as you go on the road, as you've seen with us talking about McCrary, talking about confidence. A quarterback can really... Make the whole team play with confidence if you know that he's got your back. I'm going to go with Cal. All right, next up we have Northwestern at Michigan. Who do you have in that? I'm going to go with Michigan at home. I think this is the first big signature win that Harbaugh gets. This one's tough for me because it is in the big house, but Northwestern has just been killer this season. Intellectual brutality. Got to stick with the smart school, Northwestern. Okay, I can respect that. The next game we have, one probably some people think we shouldn't be picking straight up, which is true. We got Georgia at Tennessee. I'm just going to say it right now. I have Georgia. Tennessee finds a way to blow it against much worse teams than Georgia. This might be a blowout. Well, Tennessee is going to take a 28-point lead. (laughs) And it's not going to end pretty for them. 29-28, Georgia. I like that. That's bold. Last game. That that, that was a good pick. Last game, we got Florida at Mizzou. Florida up to 11 in the AP poll. I, for one, feel like that's too high. I don't know if you do. 5-0 Florida, 4-1 Mizzou. Who do you have? Florida is one of the only undefeated teams left, and they won 38-10 to against Ole Miss. I think 11 is deserved, maybe even better. I thought they are deserving of 5, even, if you think about it. But, yeah, I'm going to take Florida in this, although I will say it is a trap game. They could easily be overlooking Mizzou. Yeah, I think trap game all the way. I think it's going to be an ugly game. Two of the best. I think our defense, Florida's defense, and Missouri's defense are the three best in the conference. This could be an ugly 9-6, 12 seven type of game i'm gonna go with mizzou at home i think florida kind of looks past them after the big performance it's possible i'd be pretty happy with that too although it would be nice to have an sec east team that's considered dominant and it seems like florida is the only chance for that this season that's true i think that wraps up the podcast as jimmy said subscribe basketball preview coming friday so excited for it we've been talking about basketball since the beginning of the summer oh, everybody on campus is everybody's super excited about the basketball season break down schedule Dude, i walked by damien he's like seven foot eight yeah he's, Dude, he's so tall and he's him and Fournette both put on a lot of mass so we'll yep. talk about that in depth and then south carolina preview next monday all right sounds good thank you for tuning in Also, right before recording the podcast, we got a really special call. My friend Carson, 
He throws 97. His last name's Fulmer, if you guys recall. Kind of a big shot. I didn't even know he had my number. I don't know where he got it from. But he called, and he's like, oh, my God, JT and Zeke, have you guys recorded the podcast yet? And I said, no. He goes, thank goodness, thank goodness. This guy was panicking. He was so thankful. Oh, my God. So thank you guys so much. I need you to promote my new Twitter page. So everyone, please follow him on Twitter. He'd really appreciate that. He, he didn't actually call, but... It would have, would have been really cool. I, it, it wasn't my dream, though. We so. might have tried to call him. Yeah, no answer. Whatever. It'll, maybe he'll answer next time. Anyways, thank you for tuning in and to Anchor Down. Anchor Down.